And so Dunyao will tell us um, something about Latin squares and Steiner triple systems. Uh, thanks for the invitation. So today I will talk about the threshold for Latin squares and Steiner triple systems. Um, this is joint work with Tom Kelly, Daniel Lacun, Abhishek Mesuku, and Derek Oztooth. So let me begin with some basic definition. A Latin square of order n is an n by n array filled with n symbols such that each symbol appears exactly once in each row and each column. So here we, we have a Latin square of order five, and you can see for each row and each column, there are five, there are five symbols appearing. And now I, I will discuss some correspondence between Latin squares and one factorizations and K3 decompositions. A one factorization of D regular graph is a proper edge coloring of the graph with colors from one to D. And given graph F and G, an F decomposition of G is a collection of edge, edge disjoint copies of H copies of F whose union covers the edge set of G. And one can observe that there is a one-to-one one -one correspondence between Latin squares of order N and one factorization of complete bipartite graph and K3 decomposition of complete tripartite graph by the following correspondence. So, for ij's entry of the Latin square, which contains a symbol k, we, we correspond it to an edge ij in complete bipartite graph with color k. And again, we can correspond it to a k3 cop, copy ijk in the set of k3s in a k3 decomposition of complete tripartite graph. And this is the figure which describes the first correspondence. And let me mention some random list edge coloring of complete bipartite graph. A random PM list assignment L for the edge set of graph G is a list assignment for the edges of G such that for each edge E, the random list LE is sampled by selecting each color in one to M with probability P independently random and also independently of the choices of other lists. And there we have a natural question asking about the threshold that an L edge coloring of complete bipartite graph exists for a ran random PN list assignment L. And we have a lower bound on the threshold. So if P is slightly less than two log N over N, then one can show that there, there is always an edge E with an empty list, which means that we don't have an L edge coloring of K and N if P, P satisfies this. So this suggests that the threat, this shows that the threshold P should be asymptotically at least log N over N. And Kesselgren and Hogbeef and Ruri and Simkin independently conjecture that the threshold is actually log N over N. And there are a lot of progress toward this conjecture and let me mention some of them. So Andren, Catherine, and Oman show that the conjecture hold when P, P is a con constant. And Catherine and Hogbeast show that if we replace KNN with KMN, where M is much smaller than N to the one half, then the conjecture hold. And Simkin observed that using the Kebashi's method, 
regarding the existence of design. One can show the conjecture for the range of probability where P is at least n to the some small constant. And then Rorian thinking show that if one replace K and N with K and N, where M is slightly less than N, then the conjecture is true. And they also gave a heating time result, which in turn gives a sharp threshold. And very recently, Sao Saoni and Simkin proved the conjecture up to n to the literal one, where the range of p is at least n to the minus one plus literal one. And our first result is to improve their recent result. So we are able to prove the conjecture up to log n factor and we also we are also able to prove the conjecture, prove the similar statement for any sufficiently dense B regular subgraph of K and N. So if G is a D regular subgraph of K and N, where D is very close to N, then if P is roughly at least log square N over N, then we can find L edge coloring of G for random PD list assignment L for the edges of G. So this flight generalization is necessary for our major um, application, which is the, the threshold for Steiner triple system. I will make, which, which I mentioned soon. Before talking about the threshold for the existence of Steiner triple system, let me mention some basic definition of Steiner systems. A Steiner system with three parameter TKN or STKN system is an N vertex K uniform hypergraph with vertex at S such that every T subset of S is contained in exactly one edge of the hypergraph. So in order that the STKN system exists, the following necessary divisibility condition should hold, where K minus one, K minus I choose T minus I should divide N minus I choose T minus I for I ranges from zero to T minus one. This can be achieved by using some double counting argument. And for small parameters, such as when T is equal to one, the corresponding Steiner system is a perfect matching. And when K is equal to three and T is equal to two, the corresponding Steiner system is a Steiner triple system which, which, which I have interest in. But for larger, for general parameters, the existence of Steiner system is non-trivial. For example, when T is equal to two, the existence of S2KN system was proved by Wilson for, for sufficiently large N if the divisibility condition holds. And for general parameters, it is proved by Kibash and, and Glockun and Glockun low and Ostus for large N if the divisibility condition hold. And so the natural question is to ask whether the Steiner STKN system exists in a random uniform hypergraph provided that and satisfy the divisibility condition. Unfortunately, this question is not obvious even for small parameters. For example, when K is equal to two and T is equal to one, STKN system is just a perfect matching in a graph. So the question corresponds to asking whether the perfect matching exists in GNP and 
The sharp threshold was answered by a seminal paper by Erdős and Rennie. But for higher uniformity, it is a notorious question to ask the threshold of the perfect matching in a random uniform hypergraph, which is called Shamir's problem. It took roughly 30 years to be answered by Johansen, Kanye, and Boo, where the threshold is asymptotically log n over n to the k minus one. And very recently, Khan gave a sharp threshold for the existence of perfect matching in a random uniform hypergraph. And he also gave a heating time result, which is a stronger than giving sharp threshold. And so the next non-trivial case is when k is equal to three and t is equal to two, which is a Steiner triple system. So let me uh, mention, Stein, let me uh, briefly mention the definition of Steiner triple system again, which is a three uniform hypergraph such that every pair of the vertices is contained in exactly one edge. So if P is, so we want to determine the threshold for the Steiner triple system in a random three uniform hypergraph. And if P is slightly below two log n over n, then with high probability, there should be a pair not covered by an edge of the random hypergraph, which means the random hypergraph cannot, does not contain a standard triple system. So the threshold should be at least asymptotically log n over n. And Simkin showed that if P is at least n to the some small constant, then the random three uniform hypergraph contains a Steiner triple system. And very recently, So, Sony, and Simkin determined the threshold up to n to the literal one factor by showing that if P is at least n, n to the minus one plus literal one, then the random three uniform hypergraph contains a Steiner triple system with high probability. So our, our result is to improve their recent result and determine the threshold for sign attribute system up to log n factor. So we show that if P is asymptotically at least log square n over n, then with high probability, a random three uniform hypergraph should contain a Steiner triple system. And actually we prove a slightly general statement than this. And to state a generalization, let me reformulate our statement in terms of K3 decomposition. So if one regards each edge of the Steiner triple system as, as a K3, then the, by the definition of the Steiner triple system, such that every pair of the vertices is contained in exactly one edge, uh, the Steiner triple system corresponds to a K3 decomposition of a complete graph. So if we reformulate our statement in terms of K3 decomposition of complete graph, it is stated as, it is stated as follows. So if the divisibility condition hold, and if the probability P is roughly at least log square n over n, then there is, there is a K3 decomposition T of Kn, where T is subset of some random set, where the random set is sampled by choosing each K3 of Kn with probability P independent and random. So, here, K3, K, and P is essentially identical to the three uniform hyper, three uniform M vertex hyper, the random three uniform M vertex hypergraph. And we actually prove a statement with slightly general than this by replacing Kn with a sufficiently dense N vertex graph with high minimum degree. 
So this is our full statement. So given G, an n vertex graph with mean degree roughly close to n, then if P is at least roughly log square n over n, then we can always find, with high probability, we can find a K3 decomposition T of G, where T is a subset of a random subset, where random subset is sampled by choosing each K3 of G with probability P independent, independent here random. So for the remaining of the time, I would like to sketch, briefly sketch the proof. So to prove the, to achieve the, to prove the threshold, to determine the threshold for standard triple system up to log n factor, our aim is to find a K3 decomposition T of Kn, where each, each K3 of T is drawn from a random subset, which is essentially identical to random through uniform n vertex hypergraph. So initially we have Kn and let B1, V2, B3 is an equitable partition of the vertex set of complete graph where the size of V1 and V2 is equal and size of V3 is either equal to V1, the size of V1, or either equal to size of V1 plus one. This is possible since the by the divisibility condition, the number of the vertices N should be either of the form 6K plus one or 6K plus three. So one of our main ingredients of the proof is so-called reduction theorem which allow us to find some subset sigma of the random subset, where sigma is a collection of K3s, which are edge disjoint. And after deleting all the K3s of, from sigma, from Kn, we get, uh, we get a following graph, subgraph H which looks like a kind of tripartite graph where inside V1, V2, V3, there is no edge inside. And H is a regular bipartite graph where with the degree one minus epsilon n, where epsilon, n, where epsilon is a parameter or w, W3, which is a set of isolated vertices in B3. And each vertex of B, B, B3 outside of W3 should complete to both part V1 and V2. So this is the larger picture of the right-hand side. And so we can find, we can finish our K3 decomposition by finding a K3 decomposition of H only using K3s in this random subset K3HP, which is a subset of this random subset. And in order to, in order to find a K3 decomposition of H only using K3 is in this, this set, we can apply the result on result I mentioned before regarding the random list coloring of this dense regular bipartite graph. So after applying the result, we obtain a least L edge coloring of this bipartite graph where the list is a random log square over n over n and one minus epsilon n list. So this is the summary of our approach. So in order to prove our main result, we apply a reduction theorem, which allow us to reduce the theorem to a problem of finding 
L edge coloring of a dense irregular bipartite graph for a random list assignment L. So, provided that the reduction theorem is true, it suffice to apply the following theorem to a dense regular bipartite graph. So in order to prove this theorem, we again reduce the theorem to a problem of finding a well-distributed probability measure on one factorization of H. And, and then we design a randomized algorithm to find a such a well-distributed measure using a method called iterative absorption. So let me briefly, briefly explain what well-distributed probability measure is. So given regular bipartite graph, we, we say a probability measure P on one factorization of M onto MD of H is Q spread if for any subset S1 to SD of regular of the, the edge set of H, if the probability that SI is containing MI for every I is at most Q to D, the summation of the size of SI. And the recent breakthrough of Frankston, Connor, and Park, they related the existence of Q spread pro probability measure and the uh, existence of a combinatorial combi structure we want. So applying their result, we obtain the following lemma. So given a D regular subgraph of complete bipartite graph, if, the, if we have a Q random, a Q spread probability measure on one factorization of H, then with high probability, we also have L edge coloring of H where L is a random Q log N D list assignment for the edges of H, which means if we succeed in finding log N over N spread measure on one factorization, one factorization of dense regular bipartite group H, then for, for L a random log square N over N D list assignment, there with high, with high probability, there should be an L edge coloring of H. So to finish off our proof, our aim is to find, our aim is to construct log N over N spread probability measure on one factorization of H where H is a very dense regular bipartite subgraph of K and N. So in order to do that, we design the following randomized algorithm. So first we choose a, an integer K where two to the K is roughly order of N over log N. And we decompose the entire edge set into roughly n over log n edge disjoint edge slice is eij, where j is ranges from one to k plus one, and i is ranges from one to two to the k minus j plus one, and we assign each edge uniformly at random, and total number of the slices is roughly n over log n. So with high probability, each edge slice has density log n, and they also satisfy some pseudo-random properties. And let's assume that the edge slice eij is located at the i position of the j level, where j level has two to the k minus j plus one slices. 
So here is the figure, here is the picture that how EIJs are located in each level. In the first level, we have two 2D K slices. In second level, we have two 2D K minus one slices. And in J's level, we have two 2D K minus J plus one slices. And in the very last level, which is K plus one level, we have only one slice. And each slice, and each slice is, is a pseudo random, a pseudo random subgraph of H of density roughly log n. And in the beginning of the our randomized algorithm, for each edge slice of the first level, we try to find a regular subgraph which contains most of the edges of the edge slice. And this can be done using max flow Minka theorem using the pseudo randomness of the edge slice. And after finding a regular slide inside each of the edge slides with a small leftover, we collect all the edges from the leftover and randomly distribute them to the slices of the next level. Then each of the edge slices of the next level is attached with uh, this green part, which correspond to a subset of leftover edges from the previous level. And we again try to find a regular slice, which covering almost all edges from the edge, each of the edge slice. But we require that the regular slice should contain, should fully contain the green part. This, all, this can be also done by using Maxwell Minka theorem based on the pseudo randomness of the edge slice. So we can find regular slice which, which fully contain the green part. And we also collect all the leftover not covered by the regular slice and distribute them to the slice in the next level. And we also have and each of the edge slice is also attached with a green part, which is a set of leftover edges from the previous level. And after repeating this process until the last level, we deduce that all pseudo random edge slices are transformed into regular slices with density roughly log n. And because H is a bi bipartite graph, this regular slice is also, is also bipartite. So because it is regular, we can decompose it into edge disjoint perfect matching by using Hall theorem. So each of the regular slice gives roughly log n edge disjoint perfect matchings. And by collecting all of those perfect matchings, this, this forms a one factorization. So we design a randomized algorithm which gives a one factorization. And our and we need to show that this randomized algorithm give a probability measure on one factorization of H, which is log n over n spread. And to examine this property, let's examine this property for a single edge. So suppose E is an edge of our, our graph H, and let's estimate the probability that E lies in ice, ice regular slice of J's level. During the algorithm, this regular slice is made of either the original edge slice EIJ or some, le some leftover edges coming from the previous level. For the, for, in order that the first case 
to happen, the, prob the probability of the first case happening is at most the probability that the probability that the edge E initially lies in EIJ, which is roughly log n over n because the density of EIJ is log n. In order that the second event happen, the, prob the probability of the second event is at most the probability that E initially lies in J minus one, the previous levels, and it should be distributed to ice regular slice of J's level. And if and if one calculate the probability is two log n over n. So in total, this probability is at most three log n over n. And one can extend this kind of argument for arbitrary subset of edges, which proves the spreadness. So this is the uh, proof sketch of our result. And for the remaining time, I would like to mention some of the open problems. So one of the very natural, natural open problem is to improve our result to, get a, to determine the threshold for this Dyna triple system. So we determine the threshold, work, threshold for the Dyna triple system up to log n factor. And it is, it is still wide open to improve this bound to log n over n. And it is interesting to determine the sharp threshold as well as heating time result, which is more general than giving sharp threshold. And, and as seen in the proof sketch, we rely on we rely much on the structure of the graph. So our proof doesn't give any result for higher uniformity of the Steiner, Steiner system. So yeah, yeah, one can conjecture that the threshold for the Steiner, the general Steiner system is this. And another open problem I would like to discuss is regarding the K3 decomposition in terms of robustness. So there is a famous conjecture by Nash Williams, which states that if the divisibility condition holds and if the number of the vertices n is sufficiently large, then every n vertex graph with a minimum degree at least three and over four admits a K3 decomposition. And this conjecture is wide open and the current best bound is the 0.83n, which was recently proved by Der Groot and Postel. And Barbara Kunlo and Ostus prove a result relating uh, the, the parameter delta star co coming from the existence of fractional K3 decomposition. And because our result gives some bound on the minimum degree, it is interesting to improve, enlarge our epsilon, maybe close to the current best bound. So if one can prove epsilon to be like one over four, then that would be much general than the Nash Williams conjecture because the K3 decomposition should be drawn from the random subgraph at the random subset where each of the K3 is sampled from, sampled with probability P independent random. So this is the end of the talk. Thanks for the listening. Let's thank uh, Dong Yok. Thank you.